Hey there, so today I want to continue with this Michelle Perez controversy conversation by highlighting what Eric Larson, one of the co-founders of Image Comics, had to say about it. This stuff is troublesome too, and when I'm talking about it, some of it may irk me a bit. But before we even get into that, I want to lay the groundwork here. So this is Michelle Perez. Now, Michelle Perez is responsible for a prior image release and has an upcoming one uh, within the next few months. Now, during a conversation, Michelle Perez decided to not only talk about Richard C. Meyer, but other the last portions here. I'm putting it all up so you can look over it, but the parts that I want to focus on are he's a war veteran, so of course he's a crypto fascist, and unfortunately an IED didn't blow him up. Now, within that, you not only have someone wishing death in retrospect on someone on a personal level, but you have the professional level that insults an entire class of consumer. You have people that have been impacted by IED, whether that's on a personal level or, you know, vicariously because you've dealt with loss or what have you. Beyond that, you have war veterans being uh, insulted because they're being called crypto fascists. Now, crypto fascists, if you need a definition for that, here's a good one, but essentially what they're doing is saying you're a closeted Nazi. You know, you haven't found your calling yet. You're a hidden supporter of, so you're a closeted Nazi. I mean, that's the best way to put it. Now, the individual that will be speaking in this, Eric Larson, he's important not because of who he is, but what he represents. You'll notice that we're talking about image comic books here, and I realize we're on Wikipedia, but still, they are good enough to talk about founding. So when you look at the founding companies here, you'll notice Eric Larson there. This is the guy that's going to be speaking. He speaks as a founder of image comic books. All right, so kicking this off, a Michael Moody decided to repost Kurt Eisenwald's initial comments on this. He said, the most horrible person on Twitter today is at Rubble Moment or, you know, Michelle Perez, a comic book writer with Image Comics who wished an Afghan vet was killed by an IED and celebrated the deaths of a number of GOP and religious figures. I don't care if you don't like people's politics, this is obscene. So he tagged Robert uh, Kirkman, Mark so Estrini and Eric J. Larson to this, asking, do you guys care? It is obscene and should not go unanswered. So Eric Larson decided to chime in. He said, I can't control what other people say or do any more than they can control what I say or do. It's just words, man. Nobody was hurt. That's freedom of speech and action. None of us have to like it. Freedom of speech, is that how you look at things that are framed within the context of a comic conversation? It's all freedom of speech. Do you think that within that conversation, do you think that wishing people dead because you don't like that person and furthering that, insulting the cast that buys your actual comics, do you think that that's the way to go? Because that's basically what you're defending there. You're minimizing that with freedom of speech, but this person really talked about someone dying in a way that's very selective. It's based on the fact that the person is a veteran. They were in a war zone. So they're talking about them dying within a war zone by an improvised explosive device, something that many people could identify with because we all know what that is. Some people are impacted by it, but even the idea of that is just obscene. You have veterans in the crowd that are impacted by that statement as well, but hey, that's all just speech, right? So uh, Michael Moody continues, so wishing someone would die by ID and and celebrating the deaths of GOP and religious figures is just words and okay with you and the rest of image. I think that's pretty disgusting. I buy a lot of image books, maybe not anymore. So Michael Moody is talking about this as a customer. You can see that he clearly illustrated it there. I am bothered by what you're saying. You think this is okay? The rest of you, the rest of image think that's okay? I find that disturbing. I buy your books 
I'm thinking about quitting buying your books because of this. So the response from somebody now talking about this as something image. So you're not talking about freedom of speech as a larger context. This has been narrowed. The focus should be on company, should be on damage control there and maintaining customer relations. But apparently image doesn't give a crap. Continuing, what would you have me do? Fire them. Stop using them. Make sure, if nothing else, to say something that distance yourself from that. But no, we don't do that. Continuing, there are uh, all sorts of creators saying all sorts of things I disagree with. And I'm sure you've said things I disagree with. Everybody does not walk in lockstep. We don't all agree with each other. Now, this this is a misstep in communication. You have a representative of a company telling a customer that, hey, you know, customers say bad things. People say bad things all the time. So that's all good. You know, not everyone has to agree. This individual talked about wanting someone in retrospect to have died, celebrated the deaths of other people there as well. You know, people you have no idea who in the the process of that is impacted by that statement. And further, called all veterans Nazis, but that's all free speech, man. You know, this person here, they could do something to truly placate the customer, but no, they don't do that. I imagine this played out in a different setting. I imagine it played out like, say, in a restaurant. You know, you have a waiter that's doing the same things. If somebody came across and said, hey, I've got a problem because that guy over there, he's doing that. If you had that manager come up and say, well, that's, um, you know, that's freedom of speech. Oh, well, how do you think that would fly? But, you know, we're supposed to continue wanting to buy comic books. Either that or the saying, you don't matter, which... I I kind of get both from that. Continuing what Michael Moody says. We don't all agree with each other, true, and as it should be. But celebrating deaths of people you disagree with or wishing them dead is something we should all agree is horrible and uncalled for. So Larson, instead of saying, yes, that is, he has to get a yes, but Obama in here. You know, because apparently, with <laughs> with this, apparently calling for the deaths of a comic uh, critic here saying that you wanted them to die. That's the same as someone saying once upon a time they wanted Obama to die. I don't understand how the two relate, but hey, I'm not someone that does this level of mental gymnastics. So looking at the statement, yeah, but people wished Obama was dead. Some jackass yelled out, kill Obama during Trump's uh, acceptance speech. People say stupid shit. There's no stopping that. That's why there are disclaimers before audio commentary. People say stupid shit. So is that the uh, byline for Image Comics? Hey, if our creators are terrible towards people, people say stupid shit. That's cool. So if somebody said they wanted, uh, you know, a transgender uh, creator to die, would you take that? Would you take that and say, oh, that's just people saying stupid shit? Or how would you go about that? Because that is literally the mindset. The next time that you guys come out and say that you have a problem with something, and you said you had a problem with people saying kill Obama here. You even put it in a comic book about it for God's sake. But with this situation, you don't have a problem because it locks steps with your mindset. Now going down the line, I find this particular portion of the conversation interesting because it highlights how you don't fall into this conversation the same way, say, Muslim would fall in if they were insulted. It really brings up that and showcases it. So starting it off, Eric Larson says, you can choose not to support that individual's work. You can choose not to buy anything. That's how our freedoms work here. That's all. Uh, being an American. And no, you don't have to like it. That is your choice. So interestingly enough, we again have a company representative doubling it down and saying that this stuff is okay. You you have the choice of not buying works from them or from our company. Screw you. You know, if you don't like what's said, 
you got to eat it because that's how it works. So Moody says, what I'm hearing is hate speech like this is okay, and that is not okay with me. I wonder how you'd feel if this person were talking about DNC folks and uh, Muslims in similar fashion. So Eric Larson, of course, says, then you're hearing uh, things nobody is saying. So nobody said that uh, they want they were celebrating GOP members uh, deaths you know since we're talking about DNC folks Muslims too you know if we took that further and said you know again or let's talk about gay individuals what about Matthew Shepard you know the the poor guy that was drugged to death because some hate mongers really felt that gays they deserve to die what if someone celebrated that would you be okay with that because that is the standard you're operating under and of course not those people they would be castigated and they would never get work here but because they said something that you personally agree with and I know that you agree with it because you know the talking point that you gave up here about Obama that showcases where your mindset is you can't see this for the hatred that it is it's also interesting within this that diversity in comics is unpersoned as an individual he has someone say that they wish he would have died by IED and he doesn't matter within it that's just freedom of speech he's some guy talking about comic books and within that Image Comics is okay with someone that represents their company saying the man should have died by bomb blast. That is insane to hear. So as an outcropping of the what would you have me do, someone said, I don't know, what would you have done if it was a white supremacist or something? Nothing? Well, folks, free speech, am I right? So Eric Larson goes with the, the statement was the equivalent of saying, I wish that car didn't swerve and miss him. There's literally no threat there. Well, number one, I don't know where the threat portion came from because is that what it takes? Do you have to threaten someone for something to be ugly? And number two, this person here, again, is a customer. They're showing that there's a problem. You have a group of individuals saying they have a problem with your company representative saying this horrible thing about somebody, but yet you keep doubling down. So, responds um, to that, I respectfully disagree, sir. There is clear regret at him having not having suffer, suffered. If uh, I had said, unfortunately, so-and-so didn't get lynched, uh, would there literally be no threat there? Threat? No. Regret? Absolutely. But that's not a threat. If I said to somebody, it's too bad that bus didn't run into you last week, I'm not threatening them. There's no intent to do bodily harm. It's regret that bodily harm hadn't already occurred. So, you know, Eric Larson decides he's going to go down the semantic highway because that's the approach to this. That's how you're going to do. Let me correct what this guy is saying here. Instead of, you know, doing a little bit of damage control, so I, I wouldn't get a call into your office if I tweeted, it's too bad Michelle Perez wasn't hit by a bus last week. No, why would you? That wouldn't make any sense. Granted, it comes off a bit different coming from a man aimed at a woman, but it's not a threat. Right there, that pisses me off to see. It it comes off different because it's a man aimed at a woman. You see what kind of company standard there is. Granted, but it's much worse when juxtaposed with all the other contentious comments she made. So Eric Larson says, I can't say that I've gone down that rabbit hole, but there are creators on all sides of the political spectrum at uh, Image Comics. I probably don't condone a lot of things people have said. So Eric Larson again makes excuses for the common Terry we saw by framing everything as political rhetoric. This was not all political rhetoric. Even if it was, dancing on the graves of your opposition is not good form, especially when you're talking about that in a professional setting. But furthering that, this person said that they wish, in retrospect, that someone would have died in a horrific fashion. Someone that is commenting on comic books. I mean, really think about that. 
How would you take that again in a different setting? When you were talking about here, granted, it comes off different uh, coming from a man aimed at a woman, but so there would have been a different setting if someone would have been talking about it, say, as a male to a female, but you're okay with it with the way that it sets up. To me, that's obscene, too, because you again have caveats where you would have seen this different. So Diversity in Comics decides to chime into this. And by the way, kudos to him on the way that he's handling this. I mean, his candor, it works really well here. He's being calm. He's being polite, but he's bringing up a point. If someone were saying that I should have died in a bomb blast, and then I had a representative of a company defending that, I don't think I would handle it as well. But he's doing well here. So anyhow, he quoted the uh, the comment where uh, Eric Larson had, had brought up Obama. And he said, a guy said, kill Obama, and you're still obsessing about it two years later. You put it in your comic. And that's what I'm saying. He put it in his comic book. So Someone at the company you co-created just said she wish I died by IED, and that's just words. So Eric Larson replies, it's all just words. People talk shit all the time. The left wants Trump dead, and the right wants Obama and Hillary dead. That statement, it reads like a one of these things is not like the other. The guy, he says, hey, the company you created, there's a person in your employee saying, I should have died by IED, and those are just words. And Eric Larson replies, yeah, people talk shit all the time. The left wants Trump dead, and the right wants Obama and Hillary dead. There's a difference there. You have some guy that talks about comics that is a customer of your company, and you're saying, well, people talk shit. You know, look at these politicians here. They are not the same thing. And a really ending this coverage for him, because I do not want to go through any more things that he says within this, I just want to boil this down to a point. He keeps saying their words. That's all this is, words in freedom of speech. That words, they don't have consequence. Now, for myself, I would argue that this is more about conduct, how somebody conducts themselves while they're in your ploy, and not simply about words. That we're talking about etiquette, that we're talking about professionalism, we're talking about more than just syllables out there. But say that we are talking about just syllables. Are you saying that words, they don't have power, and that there's no consequence to use? If that's that's not the case then. Why do we have certain laws that outright ban certain types of speech? Why do we have hate laws on the, on the books? Why do we have things like that? Because we say that certain types of wording are not allowed. Now for myself, I'm not comparing the one to the other, but what I'm saying is this guy, he is taking all of this and he's saying, hey, words are words, and he's doing that, diminishing the power that certain statements have, and further, pretending that these don't have impacts on a professional stage. To me, that's not only disingenuous, it tells me that whatever I say, whatever I do as a customer, it doesn't matter. Who cares what you think? And me, I've had enough of that. So anyhow, tell me what you think about this. You know, do you agree, disagree? What do you think about what he's saying here? All right, thanks.